Coming up, Jonathan dives into the spooky dark waters of a river in search of giant megalodon shark teeth. Welcome to Jonathan Bird's Blue World. The great white shark is one of the most fearsome predators in the sea. Reaching the size of a large car, the great white is a formidable shark. But a few million years ago, there was a much larger, much more powerful shark roaming the world's oceans, the Megalodon. A present day great white shark reaches 21 feet in length. That's about seven meters. It dwarfs a human. But the Megalodon would dwarf a great white. Experts think they reached 20 meters, which would make them the largest sharks of all time. In the distant past, when the Earth was hotter than it is today and the sea levels were higher, Megalodon roamed the oceans feeding on whales. Like modern sharks, they had a never-ending supply of teeth. When they chomped a whale, teeth would break off and sink down to the mud in the sea floor. Buried in mud under pressure, the teeth slowly turned into fossils as minerals impregnated them. As the planet cooled down, sea levels fell. Megalodon went extinct. As the oceans receded, untold millions of fossilized shark teeth in the sediment washed into rivers. This particular river, the Cooper River in South Carolina, is one of the world's most famous places to find megalodon teeth. Cameraman Tim, field producer Al Baza, and I fly to Charleston, where the Cooper River empties into the ocean. We're here to meet Alan DeVere, a world authority on finding fossilized shark teeth. Just after sunrise, Alan is putting his boat in the water at the local boat ramp. We're on a double mission, to make a segment about finding fossil megalodon teeth, but hopefully also to find some of our own. The boat is a little cramped with all our camera and scuba gear, but we'll make it work. We have a 30-minute run to the dive site, so I use the opportunity to ask Alan about shark tooth diving. Megatooth is the, the top collected fossil in the world. If you go on eBay, there's literally thousands of them for sale. Why do people collect these things? Something about a giant shark, I think, and being able just to hold that tooth in your hand. You can figure 10 foot of shark for every inch of tooth. So a six inch tooth would have been a, a shark the size of a school bus. That's almost hard to wrap your head around. You never know what you're gonna find from fossils to artifacts. You find bottles from the early 1700s here on pipe stems, arrowheads, spear points. I mean, it's, it's like a uh, Easter egg hunt with lots more than Easter eggs. It's a uh, it's an adventure, I'll say that. I love it, it's, it's my passion. As we cruise through the chocolate brown water, I can't help but wonder how I'm going to dive in this river. So Alan, like, what's the diving like? What are we gonna do today? We're gonna anchor, let you guys go down the anchor line. Hopefully we'll have great vias, which is two feet maybe. Um, <laughs> two, two feet is great viz. Two feet is great, Okay. three feet marvelous okay but um we'll we'll get you to wear as much weight as you can uh, lift safely and that'll definitely help with the current and we'll give you a screwdriver to use as a spike to stab into the ground to help pull yourself forward and uh, try to put you on some good gravel beds that have a lot of teeth in them as we head upstream and the river gets narrower i'm noticing not just the color of the water but the speed of the water I don't think I have enough hands to hold my big camera, a screwdriver, a light, and look for fossils at the same time. I need a gear reduction plan. This is what I've been reduced to. I, I've been shooting with a $50,000 red, I've shot with 70 millimeter IMAX cameras, and on this shoot, I'm shooting with a GoPro. With a handle, though. It has a handle. So it's going to be really steady, I hope. <laughs> and you've got a viewfinder. Yeah, it's got a viewfinder. It's like it's not just totally shooting blind. <laughs> Cameraman Tim has decided to go hands-free. This is uh, 
This is cameraman Tim <laughs> with the dorkiest, <laughs> dorkiest looking camera setup ever. Look at that mask chin strap. The ma <laughs> Turn your head to the side. The mask chin strap <laughs> made from a mask strap. <laughs> Any port in a storm. Yeah. Engineer. Alan throws the anchor and we're ready for some river diving. With a few last minute pointers, our team is ready to suit up and hit the water. I have to admit, I'm feeling pretty nervous. This might be the murkiest water I've ever been diving in. This one makes me go right straight to the bottom, <laughs> like a brick. <clears throat> and it's slimming. <laughs> oh. Woo! A little hot, but... Oh yeah, that light is awesome. my light for hands-free fossil hunting and then I've got this implement kind of a rake thing not only for raking but also for holding on it's my anchor Woo. it's like pea soup I literally can't see my feet. <laughs> I pull myself down the anchor line against the current. It's really hard work. The water is brownish yellow and it gets darker with every pull on the rope. I can't see the surface or the bottom. The rope is my only reference. It doesn't take long to reach the anchor. Down here, it's pitch black. If I turn my light off, I can't see anything. I'm waiting here for cameraman Tim. Tim arrives shortly and we set off upstream to find the gravel bed where the shark teeth are supposed to be. We can barely see each other. We're using old screwdrivers to anchor ourselves into the bottom and crawl against the flow of the river. We finally reach the gravel bed and start looking for teeth. I see lots of rocks and some shells, but so far no shark's teeth. But I'm not really sure what to look for. Tim and I need to stay within an arm's reach distance or we will lose each other in the murk. The diving is really spooky. When I see my first tooth, I realize that they're pretty obvious. There it is. Half a tooth sitting right on the bottom. I put it in my bag and continue on. Bolstered by my newfound success, I decide to try the rake. But it doesn't really help at all. The nice thing about the current is the fact that it will take away any mess I make. So I try waving the top layer away with my hand. It works much better than the rake. Soon I find another tooth fragment. It's half a tooth split right down the middle. searching for teeth, Tim and I surface. Neither of us found anything really spectacular, but we got a feel for the process, and I got used to working in the current and limited visibility. It's so nice to see the sun when we surface. So this is kind of an unusual style of diving. First of all, the current is ripping. We're in a river, and uh, so the, the water's really moving. So right now I have to hold this rope just to stay by the side of the boat. If I let go, I'll go sailing away. 
Then the next thing is that the water is kind of like chocolate milk. Um, you can't, here's my fin. Here's my fin. And as I put it under water, <laughs> you'll notice that it very quickly goes out of sight. And the fact is that I can't even see my foot underwater. So I would say the Viz is about, let me put my hand out. I could just see my hand that far away. It's really murky. <laughs> so when you're looking for fossils, <laughs> this light is really important because it's right focused on the bottom and you have to look at the bottom from like less than a foot away. You just have your face jammed right up on the bottom looking for the fossils. <sighs> it's, it's challenging, but it's rewarding. Soon we're off to another spot in a different part of the river. Everywhere we look, it's beautiful. Next, we suit up for another dive. And, uh, ready? It's time to descend back down into the darkness and get serious about finding some shark teeth. It's hard to believe that the visibility could be any worse than it was at the last spot, but it's much worse here. The visibility is measured in inches. Tim and I try to communicate by talking because we can't see each other's hand signals. Talking isn't working either. The good news is that Alan put us right on an excellent gravel bed and this spot looks very promising for fossils. I immediately find a small but complete tooth. And then another. They're not buried, but sitting right on top. As the current moves silt downstream, new fossils are always being uncovered. I'm using Alan's lucky pink catch bag with the Velcro closure so I won't lose my precious stash. I find another half tooth. It has perfect serrations. I have to wonder, did this tooth break like this when the shark lost it? Or did it break later and the fossil formed like this? Or did the fossil form and then break in half? We will never know. In the bag it goes. As I wave some silt away, I find a perfect specimen. It's not huge and it has marine growth that I can clean off, but this is a great tooth. In the bag. Fossil hunting requires patience, but it's actually really peaceful and relaxing to just work my way slowly and methodically over the gravel bed. The best technique is to work a grid pattern so you cover every bit of the bed. And my patience pays off with a really big tooth in perfect condition. This one is at least four, maybe even five inches. Nowhere near the size of the biggest one Alan has ever found, which was six and three quarters inches.
When I put this tooth in the bag, I double check to make sure that Velcro is closed. I would cry if I lost this tooth. This was a great spot. I finally got something. Awesome. <laughs> Some weight to it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, 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 oh. oh nice. Who's the man? That's awesome. <laughs> Where the hell did you find those? I legitimately found those. We didn't even fake it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> They're not in the greatest shape. Oh, this this one is. Which one? This one. Oh, and that's nice. It's got some barnacle action. It's got some serration oh, got action nice too. Nice ones, John. That's a really cool position too. Uh, in the gravel? What? In the gravel? In the gravel. You must have been in a different gravel patch than me. No, I was oh, just there first. you got three. <laughs> Look at them. Oh, they're still coming. Let me move this. I don't want to flood the boat. <laughs> Take this thing off. Wow. So I think someone likes this spot. It's hard to go yeah. back to. The, the rake is like just 95% for holding on to the bottom. Yeah, really. I didn't really rake that much. Yeah, really, yeah. We find more than just megalodon teeth. In fact, there are shark teeth even older than that. So, Alan, this is... What did you say the species of shark was? Angus Diden. And that's, that's pre-megalodon. Two generations, yeah. There's a chub, which is one generation, like the father to the meg. Yeah. And then Angus died, and this would be the grandfather to the May. And you can tell that because of these little... Because of those cusps. These cusps on the side. Wow. So that puts this at how old are we talking on this tooth? Mm, probably 20 million plus. 20 million years old. 20 million years old. Look at that. And the serrations are still sharp. Yeah. That's what's amazing. Too. Wow, that's awesome. Nice find, Al. Thank you. Yeah, nice. Cool. And the three of these were clumped together on the bottom. So were these three. Yeah. You know, I found the first one, and I said, oh, you know, maybe there's some more around here. And so yeah, I just that, looked. It shows you this area it, it, hadn't been picked over for, them to, for to you to find clustered. any clusters like yeah. that. Yeah. <clears throat> this one's still got a little bit of serration on it. It's a yeah, pretty, that, pretty oh, tooth. I like that. Underwater, I focused on digging, but back on the boat, I can really take some time to check out all the teeth I found. And it's really exciting, like finding them so again. This one's over four inches. See the measurements on the bag? Yep. Oh. Oh, so that's how you lost measure the sun. Well, they'll give you a ballpark. You know, it's not perfect because it's a stretchy bag, but... A stretchy bag. It's over four. Yeah. Ha-ha! Got one over four. This one's almost four. Well, I mean, if you if you measure the other side, it's over four. There we go. Always <laughs> measure, measure, measure the longest side. side. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. You want to borrow this back tonight? This one's over four. four. I got three of them over four on one dive. Wow. That's uh, that's yeah. pretty cool. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> In two days of diving with Alan on the Cooper River, I find dozens of teeth, including three that are larger than four inches and one that is larger than five. Not too bad for my first time fossil hunting. The Cooper River has been an awesome experience. Okay, ready? The diving is challenging. The visibility is bad. The current is a constant concern. But when you get on a prime gravel bed and you start finding teeth, none of that matters. The hunt for the next tooth is addictive. Sometimes the blue world isn't very blue at all. But I can't wait to come back and do it again.